Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see everyone. Uh, about five days removed from the end of spring drills. Um, start by uh, my condolences to the Baird family uh, of the passing of Ernie, uh, Mr. K-State. Uh, what a great man. Um, have uh, had a lot of interactions in my four plus years with with Ernie and everybody remembers the strong handshakes and grabbing the back of your neck and uh, but a pure K stater um, that uh, football was really important to him athletics in general he um, embraced uh, myself and our staff and uh, my thoughts go to to the Barrett family um, finished up spring drills on Saturday uh, with a uh, short practice and then a little bit of a scrimmage with the younger guys uh, the, it's hard right now for spring games for a couple reasons. One, we were down tight ends and defensive ends because the amount of kids that had season-ending surgeries, uh, that we didn't have enough bodies there. And just roster management, you know, you, you, you lose kids, you, a lot of kids. Some kids enrolled early, some kids didn't enroll early, so you're always your numbers are different. Uh, at, at each position, but you know, for the past few years, I felt very comfortable uh, with how we've done spring ball, uh, and we're getting our work in, keeping guys uh, as healthy as we can, um, and making sure that uh, we're, we're progressing uh, towards uh, 2023. So I thought we had really good work done in spring drills, and excited. We've we we had a lot of guys out, obviously, like we've had in previous spring balls, but uh, a lot of younger players got got some work. Uh, we shelved some of the six-year guys, some of the old linemen especially, and a couple of linebackers and uh, just to make sure that we could continue to focus on the future and focus on developing uh, a bunch of those young old linemen that we're really excited about. So I'm in the process right now of meeting with every kid on the football team and uh, had a few days of those this week, and then I've got the majority of them uh, next week uh, before we end up heading out uh, the following weekend for uh, Big 12 uh, meetings uh, in Phoenix and 1st of May. So busy times around here. You just solidified your staff for this upcoming season. Seven of those 10 were with you on day one. What, how's, how do you quantify the value of that staff continuity? It's huge um, to have the amount of guys that uh, uh, have the same message and know our messaging as coaches, as support staff and strength staff, to be able to have that same message, uh, to be able to see that familiar face, um, a lot of, especially after this year, so many so many coaches receive opportunities. You know, that's that's the price of success is the opportunities that coaches have, um, and uh, you know, to get guys to stay, um, it says a lot about the quality of people in our program, from players to support staff and coaches, and how well these guys like uh, working with each other walk away from the spring with anyone in particular that you know that'll play more than you thought maybe thought beforehand you know that's hard to say uh th yes there probably are a few um for me to just rattle off two or three it'd be a disservice to probably the two or three or five that i missed um but um you know we wanted to continue to get better on the offensive line that's that's the easy one with all those kids coming back uh but uh you know, the Andrew Line gangs, the Carver Willis's, the Sam Hex, the guys that have been here for a little bit that are continuing to get better and better, and, and, and Sam Shields getting better, and then some of our freshmen, you know, that, that came in last year that maybe were 260, that are now 275 to 280. That maybe another year with those guys will get them to 290, 295 um, when we got to replace all those guys. Now, we fully expect to be able to play eight, nine guys. Um, and, you know, it's so fun to see Taylor Portier out there. And, and he was not cleared for contact, but he's so much further along right now than he was last year at this time. He was out there in pads doing all the individual drills. Uh, I did have a meeting with him. He's excited about playing. And uh, um, let's hope great things happen for him. Coach, uh, you guys lost a lot of bodies in the safety room. Um, and then obviously Kobe was dinged up yep. this spring. What is the depth looking like in that room right now? Um, it was uh, unfortunate that we lost Kobe in, uh, late in the season, and then we lost Sincere late in the season. The benefit of that was V.J. Payne getting a chance to play a lot more and having you know, two and a half full games of snaps uh, where he was the guy. And so that experience will help him. Uh, Marquis Siegel that uh, came in uh, – Mid-year is a really good player. Um, uh, think Josh Hayes.
type guy, um, maybe a little bit different skill set, but uh, uh, Siegel is a really good player that uh, we're excited about. Um, Colby McAllister's taking some big strides coming forward. Uh, Max Marsh is doing uh, some good things. You know, there's some other younger players that were getting some opportunities, um, but you know, getting Kobe Savage back. Kendra Steiger is another one that was injured. It didn't go through spring ball, but he's been in the mix. He started against South Dakota. So we have some depth, but we need to uh, develop that experience fast. And so we got we have to play some guys and get some guys uh, actively involved in captain's practices as well as fall camp so that we can get a, a good rotation back there. And another one of those losses from last year would be Ty Zintner. Um, yep. You guys have obviously talked about wanting to Sure up the kicking position. Yeah. Um, how is that coming along? Um, it's neat to see Ty, for starters, get the recognition that he's uh, so well earned with the amount of NFL teams that have come in here to work him out. And uh, I'm really hoping that Ty gets drafted because I think he deserves it. Uh, he set the bar pretty dang high now. Uh, and uh, what he did the last half of last year is as good as I've seen uh, as far as a, a combo guy doing everything. And we have good depth back there. We have good competition. Uh, Jack Bloomer's punted here before, so we're excited about continuing to push Jack. Um, and then at the kicker, you know, we've got a number of guys, you know, starting with Chris that has had some game reps. And then we have some couple of young players that uh, we're really excited about. I think there's really good competition, and I think all those guys appreciate the competition. You know, we have uh, – uh, Randon Plattner back as a, as a long snapper for like his 14th year here. Uh, but we have Mason Olguin that is doing just as well, that, that is ready to help us if we need be. So um, I, I like our, our depth there and I like our competition. As far as roster management goes, are you guys still open to potentially adding from the portal if the right fit comes along? Yeah, um, potentially. I'm still having those player meetings right now. Um, so we need to get through that. We're in a window right now. Uh, that kids would be able to. I, I don't see any um, anybody leaving right now, but there's still 11 or whatever, nine days to eight days left of that. Um, we have to understand that what we have throughout spring is what we have to focus on, what we're going to have in the fall. Uh, we have a number of, of freshmen that are still coming in in, uh, in June that might be able to help us on special teams, might be able to help us in, in a, spe a specific position, but uh, um, we're still kind of evaluating that as coaches. Chris, I know what your stance is on, you know, not having a spring game or spring showcase, but there are still some fans out there who yeah. kind of wish maybe you did something. Have yeah. you ever thought about trying to bring it back in some way in the future? Yeah, um, it's something that maybe we will do. We ended up starting on the stadium, which was probably more important to us, um, getting that turf pulled up. Uh, middle of last week, um, but you know, the, here's an easy answer, and it it could be something as simple as, well, I just want to be there and watch the guys. I want everybody to see Deuce Vaughn play in the fall, and everybody wants to see Deuce Vaughn play in the spring. And for three years, that kid didn't get touched in the spring, and he was able to have pretty good falls. And so, everybody, if they if they come to a game, and I understand it from a fan's perspective, they want to come and watch. Some of the young guys, but they also want to come and watch guys like Deuce. And every time Deuce carries the football in March and April, I'm holding on for dear life that hoping somebody doesn't fall on the kid and, and, and tear his knee. So that's a little bit of why we don't do it as well um, in the fact of we want work to be done in a controlled environment. We get a second and third down period. We get seven on seven. We get red zone. We get uh, third and fourth down periods. We get all these situational things without just saying, put the ball out there and, and, and play. Um, we did that with the younger guys. And um, it's something that I've been doing for a long time. And uh, I firmly believe that that's the best thing for us. Um, and uh, unless something changes where we get more people here and more bodies, uh, it would have been hard to say, sorry, uh, the couple of defensive ends we have here, you have to play every play, because we can't even take a break. You know, giving the ball to Deuce a lot the last couple of years. Um, I'm wondering with uh, 
Treshawn, DJ, and some other guys now in the rotation. Do you see yourself next season being more of a we need one, two, and three running backs sharing the load, or could it be another situation where one guy emerges? No, I think we'll have more guys. You know, um, DJ didn't participate this spring. Uh, Treshawn was very limited this spring, so we learned and got to see Anthony Frias and James White and, and Chippers and Cantu. We got to see some younger guys, um, but, uh, you know, DJ's the most experienced guy. Uh, and we need multiple guys. You can't replace with one guy like you can with Deuce that can do everything from first down to third down um, and the durability and, and the conditioning. We need uh, a number of guys, and even DJ found that out last year that we were able to give him uh, specific games, quite a few carries to take the load off of uh, of Deuce, and that's and I know that that's what uh, Coach Anderson and Coach Klein have envisioned is, is um, have, we want to make sure we get three or four ready to play. You've been through two season cycles of the 3-3 defense. Mm -hmm. How would you gauge the progress, and are you pretty much on par with where you thought you could be? Yeah, we are. Uh, there's some things that we added this spring. You know, even though we're um, locked into the 3-3-5, our personnel has changed so much in that, meaning in 2021, our outside linebacker, and it was Reggie Stubblefield. And that was a, a really good deal in some pass game stuff and even some decent stuff in a run game, but he was a smaller body. And we saw how people tried to attack that. Then we went with a bigger body in uh, Khalid uh, Duke this year. And, and Duke had a really good year, uh, and we did some different things with Duke, but we saw how people tried to attack us with having a bigger body there. And so that's, I think, where I see Coach Klanderman and the defensive staff having a great understanding of is uh, we know how people are attacking based on the personnel we have to use. Now, how do we counter that? Because we have to continue to evolve with our defense. We did some things differently this spring within that um, configuration of 3-3-5 that I'm really excited about that uh, I think our fans will really like too. And you lead me right into Jake Clifton. Is he seeing a lot of action at Sam? And Yep. The he's, kind of he's done a little bit of everything. Jake's a terrific ath athlete. We even had him a little bit at safety so we could teach him that. Um, and the biggest reason, not that I'm saying Jake's a safety, we taught him that because we kept talking about him last November, and then all of a sudden we lose a guy. And we talk about him again because we lose another guy. And it's like, boy, how can we teach him that much stuff in uh, in a week's time, even though he's a really smart kid. And I just talked to that defensive staff, and I said, I just want another guy understanding it. Um, so if we have the issues we had last year, we can't say, well, he's never done this before. Um, but he's doing a really good job. Des Purnell is really coming into his own. I, I, I'm excited about Des. Des uh, moved from safety to linebacker, played a lot of football for us last year with Duke. Uh, and Dez understands our defense as well as anybody. So I'm excited about Dez, uh, and I thought he had a really good spring. Austin Moore and Daniel Green, everybody knows those two guys uh, are terrific football players. We shelved those guys a lot of, of spring ball. They practiced for uh, a little bit more than half, like some of those older offensive linemen, and then we allowed you know Gavin Forche and, and Terry Kirksey um, and some of our younger players to take more and more reps. Uh, Toby Osinsami was able to take more and more reps. All those guys got better because we were able to hold off Austin and, and, and Deuce. So um, from, the, from the depth standpoint, we feel much better. Um, Bo Palmer is another guy that I, I should mention simply because we know Bo can help us. But He's coming off an injury and didn't get to participate in spring. But I know that Coach Standard's excited because we have uh, a lot more depth. We have a couple of freshmen that we're really excited about as well. And I'm sure I missed somebody in that group. There's a bunch of guys that, through special teams or defense, can help us there at the linebacker spot. And from a coverage aspect with that safety unit, how would you analyze where they've uh, progressed through the spring? Um, you know, we moved so many guys around. Uh, VJ played a couple different spots. Siegel played a new spot. So, um, you know, it's it's hard to evaluate, to be honest with you. Um, I know that they progressed in learning it. You know, realize a lot of these kids have, have either done it for the first time or done it for the first time at a different position. Um, and uh, we've we have a long ways to go 
and um, have some good captain's practices, good fall camp, um, get a couple more guys. You know, when you get Kobe Savage involved, and that, that helps us quite a bit from a leadership standpoint, communication standpoint. Same with Kendra Steiger, who's played a little bit. Um, I, I'm excited about uh, uh, what Coach Klanman has to do to get to work with those guys in the secondary. We're going to be able to talk to Ben Sennett in a little bit. I'm just curious, when you think of Ben, what yep. first comes to mind? Um, how hard Ben has worked to, to get where he's at today. Um, and it wasn't easy for Ben. You know, he and I had a, ha, had our meeting already. Um, you know, he's he was a walk on that came in here and, and earned an opportunity, and he was, you know, undersized. Um, you know, two hundred five, two hundred seven, two hundred ten pounds, uh, and knew he needed to change uh, everything he did in the weight room, everything he did with his eating habits to have a chance. Well, that's not easy to do when you don't know if you're even going to get a chance. And uh, he bought in. Everything, uh, nutrition, uh, strength training, um, changing his eating habits, everything. He changed everything to say, I, I want to play. I just don't want to be a part of a team. I want to play and be a, a difference maker. And he was out all spring because of an injury. He's going to be healthy and cleared full go in the summer. And I'm excited to see what he can do because I think he's one of our best receivers. You know, We have really talented wide receivers. And I think throughout the course of late last season, fans, people would have thought, that kid's uh, a phenomenal receiving tight end as well as a tremendous blocker. So uh, I think there's a great opportunity for Ben to have a special season. Was there any – we saw the catches toward the end of the season. Was there anything that he did that surprised even you? No, because I just know what a great athlete the kid is, you know, from baseball to hockey to football to basketball to golf. Um, the guy can do it all. He really can. And so – when, when you're athletic, and then you gain confidence. And that's the thing that Ben would tell you. Once he gained confidence to say, you know what, I can play at this level. Because it's it's that whatever that moment is to say, no, I'm good enough to play at this level. And you don't have it as a freshman. You think you do, but you don't have it as a freshman. And all of a sudden, it started to click for him um, this redshirt sophomore year. And I, I saw a very confident kid start believing more and more um, and I saw Will Howard and, and Adrian say, man, this kid's really good, and he's starting to believe how good he is. Um, that's why he's such a matchup nightmare for people. Another one on Ben. How proud were you, first team, all Big 12? And then secondly, what's his potential going forward? Yeah, um, he's, he's an All-American type player. If he, if he stays hungry and stays focused, which I believe he will, um, of not, you know, being content with what he did, uh, as well as getting his body back. You know, when you miss all of spring and miss a lot of the winter workouts, uh, it uh, you're spending all the time in the training room, and that that's hard, but there's a lot of guys in there with you. Uh, but to get your body back in peak performance, and he and Will Howard are really close, and I think that's a great thing because they watch film a lot together. They throw a lot together. They're on. They're, I think everybody saw that those two are on the same page an awful lot, and uh, – um, you know, quarterback's best friend's typically a tight end when, when uh, heat's on and, and you know there's a big body out there you can throw it up to and the kid can come down with it. How much, <clears throat> excuse me, how much easier is it to convince a guy like Jake Rubley not to kind of look other places in the portal or, or what have you when you have the example of, of Will Howard yeah. staying and, 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 and how that patience can kind of be rewarded? You bet. Um, and I had a conversation with Rubes not long ago. Um, Jake loves K-State, and he has a bunch of great friends here. Um, the credit start has to start with Colin Klein because I get a chance to sit in on those quarterback rooms, and that's a close-knit bunch of guys. It was when Skyler was playing. And Will was the backup that didn't know if, if he was going if Sky was going to be healthy. It was last year when Adrian was a guy. Then it became Will, and both of them helped each other out. And I watched Jake Rubley help him out as well, even though he knew he was the third and helped him out, uh, knowing Will was going to come back. But Jake's been around here enough to know that it's you're you're oftentimes one snap away um, from being the guy, and Shoot, I don't know if he realized it, but he prepared himself that he was two snaps away against TCU on the road that it can happen at any time. And um, 
you know, never crossed my mind that Jake would come in and say he's going anywhere because Jake loves K-State. Uh, he's got great friends here. And Jake's one of the most improved players we've had from last fall to this spring as far as taking care of his body, getting better. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for him. What can you say about the impact that, that, that Coach Middleton has had since he's gotten on campus? Um, it's uh, it's never easy to to come in um, midstream, uh, and for all those guys, I look at Phil and I look at Seth in particular that have been here for a long time. That uh, um, potentially this is their fourth wide receiver coach, and that's not easy as well. Um, but you know, I told Coach Middleton, the one thing you're going to have is a bunch of guys that want to want to play and a bunch of guys that want to get better and a bunch of guys that are going to be coachable uh, that uh, know what it takes to win a Big 12 championship. And I think Coach Middleton's done a phenomenal job of educating and teaching. I think just watching his drill work, watching him coach, um, he's a teacher first and uh, uh, motivates the kids, uh, looks after them, builds relationships with them, uh, challenges them. Uh, we're excited that we have Matthew and his family here because uh, um, he's going to be uh, a guy that uh, we're going to count on as a coach because he's got a great mind and uh, I know has already helped implement some things with CK in the past game. And then going off of one of Kellis's questions, there's been a lot of talk around college football, several other coaches about spring exhibitions between yep. teams. Obviously, you talked about the injury yep. aspect and not wanting to deal with it. Does that appeal to you at all, that 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 kind of format? Yeah, I, I am under the understanding that it may go the other way, and it may go to the NFL model of OTAs uh, uh, so that we aren't ha – I mean, when you, when you throw the playoff in there, you potentially are asking kids to play 15 games now, maybe 16 games. Um, and now you're going to turn around from that and start spring ball and in a month have a scrimmage against somebody? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, these kids got to have their, their young people, they have to have their bodies time to heal. Um, all of us, all of us are, are dealing with roster management. Uh, I don't care what level you're at from Division Three to, to Power Five to the um, Blue Blood programs, if you want to say, with how many guys are going to be able to win for you next year. Nobody wants to put their best players out there uh, on April 18th in a big-time scrimmage, in my mind. I'm not, I don't want to. I mean, other people may. I hear it's going to go the other way, and we may get to an OTA deal um, where uh, you're not having as many um, injuries in the spring. Speaking of roster management, are you looking forward to the day when the the whole COVID uh, yeah. year uh, ends and how much how helpful yeah. will that be? I, I, I am. It's a benefit to the guys that um, – um, maybe didn't get as much time in 2020 to develop, didn't get as much time to play, um, whatever it may be. But it's really hard because you don't know who's coming back. You don't know what year people really are sometimes. And you, you got to do the math and look at it. And then you got to talk to them and say, okay, are you coming back for a six year? Um, I haven't decided, really thought about that. That's a lot of times the answer. Um, or, yeah, I really am, and then you say to them, well, we don't want you back. But then you want them to play your tail off for this year, though. Or, no, I'm not at all, and then you recruit that spot, and then they say, you know what, I've changed my mind. I do want to come back. Um, and that's that's the rut where it's hard in roster management. Trust me, I'm so happy we have all these offensive linemen back. But if you told me they were all coming back on December 15th, Coach Riley and I said, man, I don't know, or December 10th, whenever it was, I, I didn't know if they were. And so that's, it's, that's where it struggles in recruiting to say, how many spots do we have for alignment? How many spots do we have for safety? How many spots do we have for corner? Wherever it is, and you think, oh, we have this amount of spots, and then somebody decides to come back, then you lose that spot. You know? Or you think they're coming back and they don't, and you have another spot. That's where it's, it's just it's tricky in roster management. It really is. Um, we're not equal at all of our positions as far as we want to have this amount of scholarship kids at O-line, running back, da-da-da-da. We're not equal, and we're not going to be equal for a few more years. Also, you talked about uh, Sam Linebacker, where you went with a smaller yep. and a bigger guy. Have you kind of settled in on a, Love to a have body one in between. type? Or? Love to have one in between. But um, that that's 
that's what we're still trying to to figure out. And uh, you get you know we're two years into this, and there's not many guys that are three years in the program that have only been at that spot. Even even Desmond kind of moved to that spot. Um, I think there's advantages to both. Uh, in certain situations, even when we had Duke in there, we replaced him with a DB in there uh, for third down and stuff. Well. Uh, you guys are watching enough college football to know that that can happen, and all of a sudden they get a first down and come right back on the ball, and now it's hard because you can't get that kid out of the game. And then how many defenses are you going to show that kid so that he knows because he may be stuck out there for five plays because of the tempo. And that's uh, that's where it's it's difficult, you know, uh, about – it's even situational things of – you put three big defensive linemen in there because it's first down and you expect to run or second down and you expect to run, and all of a sudden they stay on the ball, and all of a sudden you can't get those guys off. And that's that's where you got to be really creative and make sure that you don't overload your guys with too many too many coverages, too many blitzes um, at, at specific positions because you want them to be a, 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 a third-down skill set guy. Has that kind of been a recruiting challenge, I guess, across the board on the defense, the, uh, even a couple years in? After changing, I know yeah. talking to Coach White and yep. Coach Tui, yep. you're kind of different body types now. No, that... Without a doubt. Um, we thought we finally answered it this year of what we're trying to look for at that defensive end spot. You know, when you're in the four down, you can find a, uh, a Nate that's 210 pounds or a Felix that's 210 pounds, and you hope you can build them up to 240, 245. If you look at the kids that we recruited – at defensive end this year, they're already 240 or already 230. And now they're, we're trying to get those guys to 260 as opposed to get them from 215 to 240. Um, but uh, hey, Mott, Nate, um, even Felix, who was a little bit bigger, um, those guys have, have embraced it and said, no, nah, I'll play wherever you need me to play because they love K-State. And um, we put them into some spots where you let them use their quickness too. And that's really been a benefit to us as well. Also, uh, on offense, you kind of started to phase out the fullback position. Yeah, we did. Position. How yep. has that gone and has that yeah. been a challenge? Yeah, um, simply because we want to get the tight ends that can be fullback when we need to get into that fullback. Uh, and – most people's tight ends are off the ball anymore and not all on the ball. And that's essentially an, uh, what, what the fullback does anyway. And that's um, moving forward. Um, you know, we have Christian Moore, who's truly a fullback uh, towards the tail end of his career. Um, and then we've got we've to make a decision, and CK does, of, okay, we're going we're gonna to find a few of these guys uh, or one or two, but not – make it a priority and, and try to find longer tight ends a la, like we have right now. Important question. Okay. Cat backers is coming up. Mm -hmm. Football, basketball, how excited does this make you? Um, it really excited. It's, um, it's, it's fun to see what uh, all of our sports are doing. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm not even sure which swing I'm on right now. Uh, <laughs> you probably know better than I do in what uh, swing Jerome's on, but no, exciting times. You know, when you have the run that our basketball team did, um, you you have what we did in football. You you have uh, the excitement that Coach Mitty has with everybody coming back and and adding um, players. I mean, it, it's and and what Pete's doing. Right. I mean, it's it's exciting times. Uh, right now um, for all of us. And so um, uh, it, it's fun to get out and, and see and thank all those people uh, that you see along that Catbacker Trail um, and thank them for their support because we can't do this and the players would struggle if, they, if we don't have packed houses. And uh, uh, we always tell our, our guys we have full stadiums for a couple reasons. One, uh, the fact that we hope we have good products. And secondly, we're giving back and the, and the fans are seeing our kids in the community and, and throughout the state. And you're on the second swing that's not I, I'm on the second swing. I don't have to go quite as far. <laughs> I, I, man, that driving through that storm from Scott City to, to Garden, the only thing.